now we'll start with the phylum tenophora okay now tenophores or the tenophora animals are commonly known as sea walnuts or comb jellies okay you have to remember this point that they are commonly known as sea walnuts or comb jellies they are exclusively marine animals they are having radially symmetrical symmetry that means you can see here in the diagram the organism is having a ball like structure so when we uh, cut a ball in any plane we will get two equal halves and that is what is radial symmetry okay so these organisms are radially symmetrical they are diploblastic and organisms with tissue level of organization so the level of organization is the tissue level the cell aggregates have made tissue in this organisms and they are doing the general basic functions for the phylum and they are diploblastic animals means they are possessing uh, undifferentiated mesoglia they are having ectoderm endoderm and an undifferentiated sheath that is mesoglia they are having two germ layers okay now the body bears eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which help in locomotion okay so the body will bear eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which will help in locomotion digestion is both extracellular as well as intracellular intracellular means inside the cell and extracellular is in the cavity made by the cells now they show a property of emitting light that is bioluminance and it is well marked in tenophoras okay uh, now the sexes are separate means they are uh, what they are dioecious animals that means two different animals will be there that is male and female that means unisexual animals reproduction will take place only by sexual means okay so there will be only sexual reproduction now fertilization will be external that is outside the body and with indirect development that means the larval stage will have to reach the adult stage by the process called metamorphosis example are pleurobranchia and tenoplana okay so here we talked about the comb plates okay so these plates you can see here they will have cilia in them and these cilia will help in their locomotion okay you can say that you can see in the diagram that this uh, different the body is divided into many segments okay here you can see in the diagram the green color partition is seen so here the body is divided into many segments and these comb ciliated comb pla plates will combine with each other and they will have cilia which will help the organism in the locomotion so once again we will revise the uh, characteristics of the phylum tenophora tenophoras are commonly known as sea walnuts or comb jellies they are marine animals uh, radially symmetrical they are diploblastic animals with tissue level of organization the body bears eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which help in locomotion digestion is extracellular as well as intracellular they show a property of emitting light that property is called as bioluminance and is well marked in tenophoras sexes are not separate okay reproduction takes place only by sexual means sorry sexes are not separate means they are what monoecious animal they are bisexual animals okay fertilization is external with indirect development and examples are pleurobranchia and tenoplana okay so the next phylum is platyhelminths now helminths word when we break the word platyhelminths platy means flat okay and helminths means worms so these animals are dorso ventrally flat animals and these are also called commonly as flat worms uh, have you seen the cello tape which we used which we use for uh, joining anything so when you see the dorsal the upper or the lower body of that cello tape you will feel a flat surface okay so the body of these animals also will be dorso ventrally flat these animals are mostly endoparasites means they will be found inside the host okay parasite means these organisms will live uh, or will depend on the host for their nourishment and 
when they are found on the outer surface they are called ectoparasites and when they are found inside the host cells they are called endoparasites so these are endoparasites and um, these are found in many animals including human beings they are bilateral symmetrical okay so they will show bilateral symmetry that means when their body will be divided into only one plane we will see two equal halves only in one plane they will show two equal halves and these are triploblastic animals c tiltinofora we were having what diploblastic animals and now as the evolution starts we are having triploblastic animals means they are having three germ layers that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm they are acelomate animals with organ level of organization so the level of organization also increases to organ level organs will be formed in this animal and they are acelomate animals means they are not having any cavity between the body wall and the gut wall now specific uh, forms or specific uh, uh, tissue uh, we will not call it tissue will say specific organ like things like hooks and suckers will be present in the parasitic form now hooks will allow the they will act as a normal hook and they will allow the parasite attachment with the host cell and the suckers will help in um, um, the suckers will help in absorbing the nutrition from the host cells okay so they will be having a definite characteristics that is hooks and suckers okay now some of them will absorb nutrients from the host directly through their body surface okay some will some can also absorb nutrients directly from the body surface now specialized cells called flame cells will be there in them which will help in osmoregulation and excretion so there is there can be a question which says that in which phylum flame cells are present okay so you have to say that platyhelminths and what is the function of flame cells that is osmoregulation and excretion now sexes are not separate means they are unisexual so they are bisexual animals okay uh fertilization is internal and development is through many larval stages means it, uh fertilization is internal inside the body but development is through many larval stages means it is indirect development now planaria in this group that is platyhelminths have high regeneration capacity okay we have also learned the mode of reproduction in planaria is what is fragmentation or regeneration okay so this planaria possess a regeneration capacity means when the body of the planaria is divided into many halves each half is capable of giving rise to the whole body now examples are tenia faciola okay tenia is nothing but the tapeworm which looks like the tape and faciola is the liver fluke so the diagram which is given here is a liver fluke you can see here in the diagram this this is what this is the sucker okay and here in the in the head of the tapeworm you will also see suckers okay which will help in deriving the nutrition from the host so platyhelminths are nothing but flatworms they are endoparasites and they are also found in humans they are having bilateral symmetrical symmetry they are triploblastic so the first triploblastic animals in the animal kingdom are platyhelminths they are acelomate animals and they are having organ level of organization hooks and suckers are present in the parasitic forms some of them can also absorb nutrients from the host directly through through their body surface specialized cells called the flame cells help in help in osmoregulation and excretion sexes are not separate fertilization is internal and development is through many larval stages planaria possesses high regeneration capacity examples are tenia and faciola okay so this was the phylum platyhelminths now the phylum comes that is of round worms or eschelminths okay so as we um, uh, now the these will also be worms as the name suggests they are helminths but they are what they will be round in shape okay so the cross section of these when you take the cross section of these uh, ascelments you will find what you will find a round surface so the name suggests as round worms they may be free living they can also be free living they are aquatic and terrestrial 
they are par parasitic they are also found they can be free living living as such or they can be parasitic also living in inside the body of plants and animals they are having organ system level of body organization they are having bilateral symmetrical triploblastic and pseudo coelomate animals so the platyhelminths were the a coelomate animals and here you will uh, find the forming of a cavity which is not a true cavity so we call them as pseudo coelomate animals now here the elementary canal is complete that means it is well developed it is having also well developed muscular pharynx okay pharynx is for what now you have to tell me what is the role of the pharynx okay so elementary canal is complete it means that it will have two opening one is the mouth and the other is the anus okay now an excretory tube re will remove body waste from the body cavity through the excretory pore as we already said that the elementary canal is complete so an excretory tube will be there which will remove body waste and the body cavity through the excretory pore sexes will be separate that is they are the dioecious males and females are distinct okay dioecious animals means the male partner will be different and the female partner will be different monoecious means only single animal is having both the sexes that is bisexual so these are unisexual animals often the females are longer than the males okay so this is the sexual dimorphism which is seen we can find by seeing the animals that the females are longer than the males okay now fertilization is internal fertilization is internal that means inside the body and development may be direct that is the young ones will resemble the adult or it can also be indirect now examples are escaris that, that is round worm wucheria filarial worm and and cyclostoma that is hookworm okay now filarial worm is responsible for causing the elephant's foot disease okay so this is about the phylum round worms or ashkelmins okay so once again we'll discuss the characteristics of the ashkelmins these animals are circular in cross section so they are also known as round worms they can be free living as well as parasite okay they can be free living they can be present as such in uh, land or in water or they can be present inside the body also of plants and animals now they are having what organ level of organization organ system level of organization means organ system is formed as we saw here an excretory tube is present so there is a formation of a tube okay so that is the formation of an organ which will help in excretion so they are having organ system level of organization they are bilateral symmetrical means their body can be divided into two equal halves only in one plane they are triploblastic three germ layers will be present and they are pseudo coelomates means they are having a false cavity elementary canal is complete having two openings and they are having well developed muscular pharynx an excretory tube removes body waste from the body cavity through the excretory pore sexes are what sexes are separate that means males and females are distinct they show sexual dimorphism that is females are longer than males fertilization is internal and development may be direct or indirect that means young ones who can resemble the adult or young ones can be very different from the adult examples are round worm wucheria and encyclostoma so you have to remember the names of the animals but belonging to a particular phylum okay now we come to the phylum annelida okay so these organ in these organism you can see a particular segmentation as you can observe in the diagram you can see a segmentation in the body okay so these animals are called segmented animals okay so these animals are can be aquatic that is marine and fresh water or they can be terrestrial they are free living and sometimes they are parasitic okay they exhibit what organ system level of organization as we'll move towards the upper side of the phylum that is to the more higher organism more well de uh, well developed organism you will see that the level of organization the uh, cavity and the symmetry will be not symmetry but the organs and organ system will be formed okay so they exhibit organ system level of body organization they are bilateral symmetrical triploblastic and they are metamerically segmented so you can see here 
in the diagram here you can see many segments in the body from starting to the end here also you can see many segments and these segments will be true segments okay uh, means the body will be divided externally as well as internally they are coelomate animals so the first coelomate animals are the annelids okay now their body is distinctly marked out into segments or metamers that is latin means in latin annelus means the little ring and the name from this came that is annelida okay so the whole body is divided into small small rings now uh, they possess longitudinal and circular muscles which help in locomotion okay so they will have both longitudinal and circular muscles which will help them in locomotion now aquatic annelids like nereids will possess lateral appendages which are called parapodia which will help in swimming okay and a closed circulatory system is present so here you will see the presence of a closed circulatory system means the blood will be moving with the help of certain uh, tubes okay that is arteries or veins now they are having a specific organ or specific cells for osmoregulation and excretion and these are called nephridia okay now neural system is also there and is made up of paired ganglia connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord okay now the nerve cord will be present and a paired ganglia will be present at the topmost portion so the paired ganglia will act as a brain ganglion is nothing but a group or the aggregate of nerve cells and the lateral nerves will be connected to a double ventral nerve cord i will show you like this see this is a paired ganglia group of the nerves this is the double ventral nerve cord okay and the other parts of the body will be connected to this double ventral nerve cord so these are the lateral nerves okay so the uh, neural neurological sensation will be there with the help of lateral nerves double ventral nerve cord okay and the pair of ganglia which will act as a brain in them it is not actually true brain but it will act as a brain now nereids an aquatic form is dioecious means sexes are separate and but earthworms and leeches are monoecious okay earthworm is bisexual and leeches are also bisexual reproduction is what reproduction is sexual an examples is nereis ferretima that is earthworm and hirudinaria that is blood sucking leech okay so in nereis we talked about the parapodia that is the lateral appendages so here you can see the lateral appendages okay so these are nothing but these are what these are parapodia and this is this is present only in nereis which will help in the locomotion okay in earthworm we'll say we'll see ct which will help in the locomotion and you have to remember that these will have longitudinal and circular muscles which will help in locomotion okay so we'll uh, get a quick revision of this that is they are aquatic animals or they can be terrestrial they are free living and sometimes they can be parasitic they exhibit organ system level of organization they are bilateral symmetrical they are triploblastic animals they are metamerically segmented they are coelomate animals possessing a true coelom their body surface is distinctly marked out into segments or metamers okay and hence the phylum named annelida it it is showing what true metamerism they possess longitudinal and circular muscles which help in locomotion now aquatic annelids like nereids possess lateral appendages parapodia which help in swimming a closed circulatory system will be present in them nephridia singular nephridium help will help in osmoregulation and excretion neural system will consist of paired ganglia connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord nereids a aquatic form is dioecious but earthworms and leeches are monoecious reproduction is sexual and the examples are nereids ferretima ferretima fostuma is the earthworm and hirudinaria that is blood sucking leech okay now we come to the next phylum that is arthropoda okay this is the largest phylum of animalia which will include insects okay so this is the largest phylum 
okay of animalia you have to remember that over two thirds of the all named species on earth are arthropods mostly 70% of the arthropoda will have insects and insects are the largest group of animals present on earth so arthropoda is the largest phylum of animalia they have organ system level of organization okay they are bilateral symmetrical triploblastic segmented and coelomate here they are segmented but it is not true segmentation as in annelids the body of arthropod is covered by chitinous exoskeleton so the outer body will be covered with the help of chitin okay uh, chemical called chitin so the outer skeleton will be made up of chitin the body will be divided into head thorax and abdomen and these animals have jointed appendages means they will have jointed legs and so the name comes arthos means joint and poda means appendages in the previous phylum also we talked about parapodia so podia word stands for appendages pseudopodia okay in amoeba so poda is appendages and arthos means joint so these animals are having jointed appendages respiratory organs are gills book gills and book lungs or tracheal system in some you will find gills some you will find book gills some will have book lungs or tracheal system now circulatory system is open type it means that the or the cells in the tissue will directly bath into the uh, uh, ba- uh, blood okay it will not be circulated with the help of artery or vein okay now sensory organs like antenna eyes will be compound and simple statocyst or balance organs are present so balance organs that is statocyst will be present in our body air is the balancing organ and in them statocyst will be present sensory organs like antenna will be present on the uh, head part eyes will can be simple or compound compound eyes eyes are the eyes which are having uh, mosaic vision okay they will form lots and lots of, of images okay and then they will combine that and they'll see that images and for excretion they are having malpighian tubules they are having what they are having malpighian tubules okay they are mostly dioecious means sexes are separate fertilization is usually internal okay they are mostly oviparous egg laying animals okay development may be direct or indirect examples are economically important insects like apis that is honey bee bombyx silkworm lacifer lac insect will be, which will produce the lac chemical vectors are anopheles culix and aids okay now anopheles mosquitoes is responsible for malaria uh, now gregarious pest are locust locusta that is locust gregarious means they will eat anything any plant or anything living fossil is the lumulus that is called king crab it is having a long 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 life span okay so the characteristics are of arthropoda are they are the largest phylum of animalia which include insects uh, over two thirds of all the named species on earth are arthropods they have organ system level of organization they are bilateral symmetrical triploblastic segmented but not true segmentation and coelomate animals the body of arthropod is covered by chitin okay that is outer exoskeleton is made up of chitin the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen they have jointed appendages so the name comes that is arthropoda arthos means joint and poda means appendages respiratory organs are gills book gills book lungs and tracheal system circulatory system is of open type sensory organs like antenna are present eyes are generally compound but sometimes it can be simple statocyst are present for balance balancing purpose excretion is through malpighian tubules mostly they are dioecious fertilization is usually internal that mean inside the body they are mostly oviparous egg laying animals development may be direct or indirect examples are uh, honey bee silkworm lac mosquito locust king crab and other insects okay so this is the four phylums we studied today okay